101 Facebook Tips Number 1. Signing up. Your own name. You should use your own name or your nickname if people use it more commonly to sign up. It's important to ensure that friends, family, and colleagues can find you easily. Number 2. Your email. Facebook sends out a lot of notifications once you start signing up with various groups, fan pages, apps, and even comments. But people can also find you by your email, so you should probably use a personal email account. Check it frequently for friend requests and more. It has to be real though, because Facebook uses it and sometimes your mobile number to verify who you are. Number 3. Read the terms and conditions. You should always read the terms and conditions on any site, and Facebook is no exception. Though, it should be noted that Facebook frequently updates its terms of service, causing a lot of outrage in the community. Know where your rights are and read their documentation. Number 4. Search your email. In some cases, when you sign up for Facebook, especially if you use a free email system such as Hotmail or Gmail, Facebook can search your email addresses and see if anyone in your address book is already on Facebook. Number 5. Profile information school, university, and company. The first piece of profile information Facebook asks for is your school, university, and company. This starts the first basic groups link so you can find alumni and colleagues from work. If you don't want to find anyone there, leave it empty and click skip. Number 6. Profile information, picture. Your profile or avatar doesn't need to be of you, but it's usually a good idea to use a shot of yourself so that people that aren't sure they found you can add you. Many people change their profile photos weekly though, so you can use just about any image you hold copyright to. Number 7. Profile Information Basic Information once you've gotten into Facebook, you can fill in any or all the personal information on the basic information box, and depending on your security settings, people will be able to see this. It's sometimes the difference between knowing whether it's you or another person that they will friend, so this information can be useful. Number 8. Profile information. Is Facebook a dating site? One of the core pieces of information that Facebook asks about on sign up is what you're looking for on the site, along with your religious standing. Don't be afraid to mark friendship in that box, even if you are actively seeking a relationship. It makes little difference to people adding you. Facebook is not a dating site, though there are groups on there for finding partners. Number 9. Profile information, personal information. Many people don't list all of their hobbies. Instead, list the ones they're interested in attracting friends for. If you've got a guilty pleasure, remember that people may be able to access your information even before you add them, so you may not want to publish that. The boxes in this section are entirely optional. Number 10. Contact Information One of the boxes you can fill in is Contact Information. Be aware that depending on your security settings, you may then place your ID out in the open, which can open you up to spam or bot contact. Number 11. Profile Information – Network If you're interested in chatting with or meeting up with people in your region, you can add where you live and join that Uber group. Some require email addresses or other information that proves affiliation, but Facebook has recently improved that interface, so it works very well. Your network affiliation is listed on your profile unless you change the security settings. Number 12. Profile Information – Friends As we'll explain later, you can keep those that you've added from appearing in your search, but your friends list is always visible. Be careful when adding controversial people in your life, as it's very easy for the other friends to use your list to find others to add. The only exception to this is if you add someone with extremely tight security settings. Number 13. Profile Information – Relationships Facebook allows the listing of relationships in your profile, but until the person you're in a relationship with confirms it, you will only be listed as in a relationship. Otherwise, you will be tagged as in a relationship, but not with whom. Number 14. Fill as much of it in as possible. 
Remember, you can always come back and add or subtract information. It's usually something people don't do often though, so spending those extra few minutes at sign up to create a proper profile is well worth it. Number 15. Security from the outset. We will talk more about security later, but some people join Facebook simply to keep up with a tiny group of friends. If you're one of those people, then you will want to ensure your security is as tight as it can be. Number 16. Finding friends, colleagues, and fan pages. Facebook has made it fairly easy to find people and add them, but in the mix with people you can find are fan pages, which are like mini profiles and groups. It's important to remember that people, such as authors or local personalities, may have multiple listings in search results, so you may need to contact them and ask them which to add. You also have to take one extra step to make sure people can find you. You can currently have 5,000 friends total. Number 17. Searches. Searching by name may bring back dozens of results, so if you know the person well enough, find out what email they use and add them via that. Adding people via email is often easier than searches too because it means you're certain you've got the right person, without opening yourself up to unwanted attention. If you add someone that isn't actually the person you wanted to add, they can see your entire profile. Number 18. Adding people via friends. If you're a close-knit group of friends or a new group that met through university or a similar pursuit, it's normally okay to go through another friends list and find those that you know, but don't abuse this. Adding everyone from every friends list can get you flagged as a spammer by Facebook. Number 19. More than one profile? Be careful not to create more than one Facebook page. It's against their terms of service and can lead to confusion when people add you. It is possible to create a main account and make the rest of your accounts as pages, but again, be careful. Facebook has a policy about fake pages, fake names, or abusing that facility. Number 20. Fan page is too much for you? You can hide fan page and app and even friend updates from view easily by setting up your feed. Hiding fan pages even temporarily can let you get your Facebook reading back under control and let you decide whether you want to follow them long term. Number 21. Removing friends or pages. Removing friends is easy. You just go into your friends list and click the X beside their name. You can find your friend list by looking at the left column on your main feed based on Facebook page. Or you can go to account and then edit friends. Number 22. Using friends lists to organize your reading. Facebook introduced a concept called friends lists recently, allowing people to sort their friends into groups, sorting them onto groups of your choosing. Having workmates, best friends, limited profile, the choice is yours. You can also edit en masse by selecting account, then edit friends. Your whole list will appear there with a drop down arrow list, including your pages. Simply filter them onto a list you're comfortable with and then you can control your feed. Number 23. Been blocked? Facebook is hard to contact in case of problems, but you can sometimes email them at whatever published email contact they currently have and ask them to review your case. If you've done nothing wrong, you should be reinstated. If you were hacked, you should contact support urgently and follow their instructions to regain control and become unblocked. Number 24. Got badge? One of Facebook's nicest widgets is the ability to create badges and display them on your web page or site. If you've got a reasonably public profile, you can use these easily. If your profile is highly protected and privacy locked, you may want to consider whether you want to use it at all. Number 25. Looking for more? If you have just recently joined Facebook, instead of searching for everyone by name, go to another friend's profile and find the people you're looking for by checking their friends box on the left hand side below information. Be careful not to add too many people though, it can be seen as spamming and may be picked up by Facebook. Number 26. Security and privacy. There's a lot of options in Facebook that you have to pay attention to, especially if you don't want to put your information in public. There are options to protect everything that you have on Facebook, creating a stripped out, bare public profile, but you do need to change your settings. It's not automatic on creation. Number 27. Use fine-grained controls. Don't want your family accessing your photos? 
Lock them out. Want to only allow reading access to your status updates to people closest to you? You can do that too. Though, remember apps use your default posting, which is your overall status posting setting. Go to Account, then Privacy Settings, and explore your options there. Number 28. The tightest locks. If you put everything in your security to friends and remove yourself from search engine results and then start using Facebook, you'll have to add people and they'll never be able to do it themselves. If you don't want people knowing you're on Facebook, this is an ideal situation. Number 29. Know your settings. Understanding that the different settings mean for privacy and posting is what makes or breaks your Facebook usage. There are four settings. Everyone, friends of friends, friends only, and custom. Friends of friends means that any information you share on your profile can be visible by anyone that has a friend of any of your friends, opening your profile up to a lot more exposure. Number 30. Your name, date of birth, address, and other information. Keeping as much of your information private as you can means that you can protect yourself against identity fraud. This also means not adding random people and practicing safe login and logout practices. Facebook is rife with mistakes that have opened people up to identity fraud, but knowing your way around security settings will stop this. Number 31. Privacy Profile Information In Account, Privacy Settings, you can choose to set your different parts of your profile and information to one of several settings. You can also customize them so that only your own list of friends gets to see certain things. This extra layer of security is incredibly powerful and worth the time it takes to set up. Number 32. Being harassed by a colleague that you just don't want to add? Sometimes people don't take no for an answer. If you find that someone is continually asking you for an ad, go to their profile page, scroll down to the bottom, then hit report slash block this person. Blocking them will stop any unwanted advances. They won't be able to see you at all, or you them. Number 33. Apps getting you down? Did an app you added suddenly change its posting policies? Are you finding that some apps are more invasive than you wanted? Go to Account, then Application Settings. There you can remove any you no longer want to use, change posting policies in some cases, and more. Since Facebook changed how apps notify people, their notification feeds have been a lot less cluttered, but notifications now appear in the left sidebar, which confuses some people. Number 34. Don't let Google see you. If Google using what little of your profile is visible after you've adjusted your security settings to your perfect level of privacy makes you nervous, you can tell all search engines that you don't want them to view your profile by going to Account, Privacy Settings, Search and Search Engines, and unchecking the box beside Public Search Engine. If you've got good security settings and are happy for your name and photo to appear, have a look at the preview before checking it. There is very little on the average profile including no updates. Number 35. Hacked? Sometimes people lose control of their Facebook account. This could be because of a virus or worse. You can regain control by following the instructions by following Facebook's own guidelines. It's important to do a virus scan as soon as you discover you've been hacked, just in case. Do that before returning to the site to reclaim your profile. Number 36. Photos and videos. Don't appear where you don't want to. Along with other privacy settings, be especially careful about your movie and photo settings. It's important that you keep your video and photo settings as private as you can. If you're tagged in either, it displays them in the world at large based on your settings. If you lock your video and photo options to a minimum, friends only, you can be sure that embarrassing items will be kept to just your close circle rather than any Google cache. Number 37. The best phone app? There is no one best app for Facebook on each mobile platform, so look around and see if you can find a highly recommended one. Sometimes phones come with bundled apps or built-in API access, which, if you're a social animal, your phone can be a lifesaver. Be aware that most apps are limited, as are most phone-based browsers. Number 38. Tweet Deck. 
TweetDeck is a Twitter poster that has expanded to take in other places like Facebook and comes highly recommended on any PC or laptop. It has a tiny memory footprint and gives an unparalleled access to a lot of feeds at once. Beware its API call on Twitter though, at 150 an hour. Facebook currently has no limitations. Number 39. Automatic posting? Some people use automatic posting to allow them to post information at set times, though Facebook's terms of service seems to be a little grey about this. Being careful and only posting relevant information will allow you to connect and network in a way that it was designed to allow. Number 40. Facebook Connect. Facebook Connect is a handy extension of the Facebook login and API tying various things back to your profile or allowing you to interact with other sites or programs using your Facebook credentials. This can be a good and bad thing. If interaction causes constant posting to your feed, people may find it annoying, but it also means you've got a centralized login. Number 41, Live Streaming. Live streaming allows you to pull all of your feeds into one place and Facebook offers several widgets based on what you need for your site. Go to Facebook's widget page or search the internet for information on how to use your feeds in interesting ways off-site. Number 42. Posting updates. The main basis of Facebook is the ability to post short 420 character updates. You can tag friends in these by going at sign, name, or simply tell people what you're up to. Some people take part in mini games in these too. The choice is only limited by character length. Number 43, auto subscribing. Commenting or liking someone's status or notes or anything else in their feed will automatically subscribe you to notifications about future activity. You can reply to this, however, from your email, which means you don't need to log into the site constantly. Number 44, the notification bar. At the top of the page, there's a blue bar with four icons. This is your quick overview of any activity aimed at you. This includes anything you've subscribed to by participating in it. Number 45, your newsfeed. Your newsfeed comes with several options. You can read the most important stuff based on Facebook's algorithm or the most recent posts. Missing friends? Scroll to the bottom and click Edit Options. Put 5,000 in the bottom box. It'll remove all limitations to your feed. Number 46. Not interested in a friend's updates right now? If for whatever reason you don't want to see a friend's update, for example, their updates are only about games you don't play, you can hover over their update and a box will appear saying Hide. You'll get different options based on what sort of update you've hovered over. Number 47. Walls. You can have a public discussion by posting something on someone's wall. This appears in your feed and theirs, so it's great for congratulating someone or wishing them a happy birthday. Walls are public though based on a person's settings. Number 48. Boxes and tabs. Various apps will allow you to add boxes and tabs to your profile. Boxes appear on a page and are small. Tabs are headings much like a filing cabinet. These can give you the ability to display key information on your pages or in separate subpages, but can also clutter your profile page. Be careful what you place and where. Number 49. A box on your profile. There is a box on your profile when you click View Profile, which can be readily edited and contains some key information that you choose. Some people use it to show others their calendar, others display a quote or some mini information. Use this as best you see fit to give your friends and new ads something interesting to read. Number 50. Left hand side, your profile. Your profile has several key areas to interact with. The middle where your feed is, your left hand side, to access your stuff and the right hand side which has suggestions, your gifts and other items from apps and some other things such as pokes. Number 51. Messages. Your messages are your internal email inbox. This gives you the opportunity to message people without writing on their wall. See the previous tip. 
or start a discussion between friends. If you're doing this frequently, see our tips on pages and groups. Number 52. Events. You can set up events, a bit like a calendar. People can RSVP and you can use it to invite friends to anything you're doing, from a birthday party at your place to a gaming party or guild event in your favorite MMORPG. Use it to organize social events without worrying about lost emails. Number 53. Removing events you can't attend. Once you have declined an event, you can then remove it from your events list. Simply open up the event, optionally leave a note apologizing for, for not attending, then directly below the image on the right hand side there is an option, Remove from my events. Number 54. Photos and videos. Your photos and videos list items will let you access any photos that are tagged of you remembering your privacy settings and review them. You can also remove tags at any time, which means even though you are in the photo, it won't list you in your stream. Number 55, Applications. All of your applications are accessible from this tab. It will take you through a list of most used and when, and will also give the options to access others. This is a great tab to review what apps you do and don't use and remove them to save them cluttering your feed, or visit them and check what's new. You can also search for new apps there. Number 56, Games. Much like the Applications menu option shows you when you've played, whether your friends play, and how many, and allows you to explore popular games amongst your friends and the wider Facebook population that you may not have seen yet. Number 57, Ads and Pages. We talk more about ads and pages on their own section, but this is how you can access them quickly. If you choose to advertise them, set up AdSense like adverts. Number 58, Groups. Your Groups menu item is actually the access to your pages and groups. Two columned lists with each showing recent activity and more. You can easily view the things that you may have missed simply by checking the recent activity on these pages. Number 59. Notes. Notes are a bit like mini blogs or can be used by you to import RSS feeds to and automatically post. It's Facebook's own solution to live streaming but only allows you to import one RSS feed at a time. You could build a Yahoo pipe of everything you wanted to import and use that as your Uber feed if you had a lot of blogs though, so it works out well. Number 60. Links. Your links menu option is a lot like Delicious. Every time you post a link, it's added to this list and you can view what your friends have been posting recently or just keep track of your own stuff. Number 61. Right hand side. The right hand side of your page contains any application items, such as gifts, be aware that these can build up fast, friend suggestions, information on inactive friends, pokes, and event listings that you've accepted. Number 62. Gifts and application notices. Facebook has suggested that eventually these will be all incorporated into the left bar of the site, where your games are listed, but for now, we'll still get listings of any gifts, invites, or games to any other requests, including friend requests, in the top right corner. You should keep on top of them. 20 invites a day leads to 140 at the end of the week, and it can, at time, be consuming to prune them weekly. Number 63. Application notices out of control. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, your application lists will get out of control. You can either dedicate time to fixing them, or quit from the app in question by clicking Ignore App. You can also ignore friends' invites, but not the friends themselves. Reload the page and any you've ignored should be gone. Number 64. Suggestions. Facebook has an algorithm that chooses information to show you. When people friend other people, sometimes you will have suggestions, as they do with pages and groups. These suggestions, and they can't see your profile and until they add you, you won't see their, their whole profile. Suggestions can be hidden or ignored. Number 65, poking. Poking allows a person to see your profile, even if they aren't your friend. 
If they are your friend, it will give them a message the next time they log into their Facebook in the right hand bar of the page. Any pokes you've received will be here too for you to respond to. Number 66. Events. You will see a list of any events you're confirmed to attend in your sidebar. This is a great feature because you can simply align your diary by reading that area and booking it into your time management system of choice. You can also click through and turn down events or see who else is attending. Number 67, Ads. If you have used Facebook to place an ad, you will find that they appear in the right hand bar. If you keep seeing an ad, you can report it so Facebook can fix their algorithm for showing them, or hide them entirely from you. Number 68, Under the Picture. You can view their profile by clicking on their picture in your feed. Once there, you can poke them, view videos and photos of them, or send them a message. Below that is information that they've made available to friends lists, including relationship status. It's a good way to catch up with someone you haven't seen in a while, then reach out and contact them. Number 69, commenting on their wall. You can leave people public messages on their walls, as they can do on yours. Just click on the status box and write what you'd like them to see. Remember though, it's also posts in your feed, so be careful what you say. Number 70, Adding apps or boxes your friend has. If you see something really interesting that your friend has, click through and add the app they're using by following the instructions. If you've seen a Facebook page that is exactly how you'd like yours to be, click through and create items as you can. Number 71, commenting. You can comment from your own feed or if you've gone over to a friend's profile, which is a good idea just in case they've been bumped out of your algorithm-based feed, and comment there. Comments have a length limit, but you can split over several boxes and it will stack correctly. Number 72, tagging. You can tag a friend or yourself in most photos you have access to. Be aware that some people dislike being tagged in photos, so if your friend frequently removes tags of him or herself, maybe you shouldn't tag them. Any tags of people in videos or photos or notes will appear in their stream. Number 73, group or page. A page is basically a mini profile. A group has more group-centric feel to its front page, but there's a little difference between them in reality. There are no current accurate figures posted on limits to pages and groups, so there may not be any, but be careful to join an official group or fan page belonging to the official entity. There are many unofficial fans and groups on Facebook, and it's not highly policed at present. Number 74. Pages and Apps Some apps can post to pages as if they were profiles. Much like fully-fledged Facebook profiles, pages can have most of the features of a real profile, so adding apps to them may be a possibility, depending on the app in question. Explore your options carefully though, because if an app is posting on your main profile and your page, people following both might get duplicate content. Number 75, Groups. Groups are like clubs offline. You choose who can join and how wide its access is. Much like other parts of Facebook, it has its own wall which everyone can post to. Pages have two, one for the owner to post to, one for fans to post to, and then it all feeds into one amalgamated stream. Number 76, running both. Many places consider Facebook to be a place for allegiances. Groups will then represent casual membership and interaction in clubs, pages could be considered a great endorsement or badge of interest, so running both isn't a bad thing. Number 77, Causes. There are specific apps for causes on Facebook, but if you're passionate about something, starting a group or page is a great way to go. Remember to make others admin in edit membership on the group page or main page so that you're not the only one in charge. Number 78, Ads. You can place your own ads on Facebook and they run a lot like AdSense ads in most cases. You'll need to condense whatever message you want to send in a very short sentence, but these ads are targetable and very powerful. Number 79, Farmville. 
Farmville is one of the most popular game apps on Facebook and allows you to run your own farm, grow your own virtual crops, tend animals, and more. Its simplistic interface allows anyone to play easily. A similar game is Farmtown, but the mechanics are only slightly different. Number 80. Crops. Try to think about how often you check your Facebook. If you're planting crops, make sure you'll be able to come online to harvest them, or they are a waste of space and coins. As the more crops you harvest and the more crops you plant as a relation to your level, planning your crops carefully will allow you to maximize your gameplay and afford items you may need. Number 81. Harvesting. When you harvest your crops in Farmville, they sell automatically. The same can be said for animals or trees. Farmtown stores all of your harvests in a box and you can go to market and sell them. Number 82. Vehicles and Storage. As soon as you can, get a harvester, seeder, and tractor. They will allow you to manage much larger farms, but require fuel. You can save up coins to buy them instead of paying real money for Farmville cash. Same thing can be said for buildings. Some are limited edition though, so you can only be bought with cash. Number 83. Fuel. Fuel is used to run vehicles, but it's finite and rechargeable. You can also buy fuel using cash, but larger farms use up fuel before you've finished your harvesting, plowing, and planting. So remember, whatever you choose to do, you'll have to do some manual work. Number 84. Is Farmville cash worth it? Depending on many factors, including how competitive you are and whether you want exclusive items, any apps that allows you to buy special credits can be worth it. Don't buy them if you're a casual player, though. Number 85. Collectibles and Projects Farmville has a mechanism to build things like stables. Your friend's list has to send your component parts, and then, can, and then you can build a stable or expand your storage. This can be frustrating, however, if you need a lot of pieces. Patience will get you there, and until then, keep posting about it every few days by clicking on the building and sharing via that box. Number 86. iPhone App Bejeweled's iPhone app links to the game on Facebook via Connect and allows you to post your score to Facebook. It is well worth the money, giving you four mini games in one and another way to play while you're waiting somewhere without computer access. Number 87. Sign up for the competition. Bejeweled offers a free competition and includes the scores from your iPhone app in the updates on site, which allows you to simply join in on the draw even when you're not on Facebook. Number 88. Two different styles of game. Bejeweled on-site recently introduced special bonus crystals and more, giving another variation to the one-minute blitz style game. Using the ones that fit with your play style can maximize your score. Bejeweled on the iPhone hasn't had these introduced yet. Number 89. Bejeweled posts. Bejeweled will post to your profile whenever you reach a point's target. Sometimes you'll post a lot in a row, which can be annoying. If you're planning on playing for a while, you can cancel posting, as you can do with any other app, and post the last one. Your friends will appreciate this. Number 90. Mafia Wars Vampire Wars Both Mafia Wars and Vampire Wars are basically the same game with some minor variations. Again, like Farmville, you can buy cash or credits to use in special parts of the game, but unlike Farmville, you don't grow crops or care for animals. Number 91. Finish jobs even if you're leveled up. Mafia Wars and Vampire Wars allow you to move on to another level set of quests, but you should stay on the lower level ones and complete them if you can. It's a long process in most cases, but it does mean that you get extra skill points and sometimes in-game cash. Maxing out the completion also gives you cool titles and other stuff that you can't otherwise learn. Number 92. Adding friends. It's important to remember that not everyone wants to play these games, so if you invite people, don't do it constantly. If you're new to Facebook and your friends are inviting you, look out for those that play and ask them to add you or sign up and invite them. Number 93. Gifts. Sending gifts or elements from a game will also invite people to the game, so be careful who you send gifts to. They may have either blocked the game or will remove you as a connection. Similarly, you can only send one a day, so choose wisely. 
If a friend is completing a collection, go for that. Number 94. Posting your achievements. Most games allow you to post your achievements, levels, or important milestones. If that's all that makes up your feed, you may find that your friends complain, or don't read anything that you post at all. Number 95. Removing games. Like every other app, you can remove any apps that are interfering with your profile or posting too often. You may find that your friends complain if it posts too often. If that happens, you can simply change the app's posting privileges, or if you're not playing at all, remove it by going to Account, Application Settings, and hitting the X beside the game name. Number 96. Networked blogs let you share your blog. Did you know that networked blogs also allows you to post to your own page? Be careful though, those that have you as a friend and have fanned you will get more double updates from your blogs. Number 97. Network blogs also allows you to follow other blogs, including your friends and some of the biggest blogs on their web. If you have a list of friends that you'd like to read, consider following them on Facebook. If they're there, their blogs will be inserted into their feeds easily. Number 98. Network blogs or importing notes. Notes are a great way of simply posting a lot of content to your feed, while networked blogs has features that blend importing RSS with a group. You can have people fan and rate your blog, have discussions area and more. It all depends on your community needs. Number 99. Integrating other networks. Facebook has a lot of bridge applications, which allow you to integrate external social networking sites, such as Flickr and Twitter, into your feeds. These powerful tools can take a while to set up, but are well worth it if you regularly use the sites you're linking up. Number 100. Horoscopes and more. Like everywhere else on the web, Facebook has facilities to post horoscopes and more. If you're interested in that sort of thing, find one that your friends use and post it. Number 101. Developing your own. Facebook has a powerful API that allows you to develop just about anything based on a framework. So, developing something that you think other people might like to play is easy. It's also good advertising for the cause or company of choice. Have fun! While all of these tips cover the mechanics of networking and beyond, it's important to remember that you should always try to enjoy yourself. Facebook is a social site. Be social and enjoy everything it has to offer.